Hi, I'm Julianne Cost. Let's take a moment to explore a few different ways to selectively change the colors in our images using the masking tools. We're going to start off with this image, and let's say that we want to see the reds in front of the wall, and maybe a little color in the benches, but we don't want any color on the other side of the wall. I'll start in the Color Mixer panel with the Adjust set to HSL. Under Saturation, I'll click on the left side of the slider in order to desaturate all of the colors. We could also use the Luminance option if we wanted to adjust the way that the colors were converted to grayscale. All right, I'll switch back to Saturation, select the Targeted Adjustment tool, and then click and drag in the image to bring back some of the reds and oranges. But that brings back the color in the entire image. So let's move to masking, and we'll add a brush mask. I'll choose a little bit larger of a brush, with a small feather amount, and the flow set to 100%, and then I'll paint in this area, and then use the saturation slider in order to desaturate it. But this is a fairly simple image. Let's move to the image of the bird. Here, I want to keep the yellows in the bird and the berries unsaturated while desaturating the background. We could try adding a background mask, but we can see that it selects the berries in the foreground as well as part of this branch. So let's go ahead and use Command Z or Control Z to undo that. We might also want to try using a color range mask. However, there's a lot of yellow in this background foliage, so that probably won't work well either. Instead, I'm going to choose an objects mask, and with the mode set to the rectangle, I'll quickly create a rectangle around the berries to select them. Then I'll use the saturation slider to desaturate the area so that we can see what we're doing. I'll choose the add option and choose objects again, and again, I'll drag around the berries. I'll continue to add another object's mask, this time dragging around the bird's head, and then I'll add one more object's mask right over here around the feathers. However, you may have noticed that it's also desaturating this area in the head, so I'm going to choose Subtract and then select a brush. I'll get a little bit smaller of a brush and then paint in this area in order to prevent it from being desaturated. But this is exactly the inverse of what I want, so I'll use the More icon next to the Mask icon and choose to invert Mask 1. Excellent! We can even bring back some of the color in the background by just using that saturation slider. All right, let's move to this next image and use a bit of a different approach. Here I want to keep the rooftop of the house in color and make the blues in the window more saturated. I'll choose the Range Mask and add a Color Range Mask, and click in the rooftop. But it didn't select all of the colors that I want, so I'm going to use the Refine slider in order to include additional colors. Then we can decrease the Saturation slider. Again, this is the opposite of what I want, so this time I'll invert not the mask, but just the Color Range component but there's still a lot of color in the foreground. We could try adding the subject mask, but it will still leave a lot of color in this other structure. So instead, I'll add a brush mask, a little bit larger of a brush, and then just quickly paint in the foreground area here in order to manually remove any of that remaining color. Then let's zoom in a bit, and I'll add a new object's mask. Let's see if we can drag over all three of these windows at once. Well, it's selected a little bit too much right here, but let's make our change. I'm going to click on the color swatch in order to add some blue, and then I'll use the exposure slider under Tone to just darken them down. Then I'll choose Subtract, select the brush, get a smaller brush, and just paint between these two windows to remove that area. Then we can add another object's mask. I'll click and drag over this window. 
And let's add one more in order to add the last window here. Excellent, let's toggle the visibility of the masks. So there's before and there's after. Next, let's move to this final image and return to the edit stack. Under the basic panel, I'll click on black and white, and then we can return to the masking panel. In order to make this look hand colored, I'll start with the objects mask and then drag over the lighter portion of the bird here. I'll click on the color swatch and let's add a pinkish red color. Then in order to select the perch, I'll choose objects again and drag around the wooden perch in the foreground. This time I'll use the color swatch in order to add a brown color and then darken it down using the exposure slider. In order to select the background, I'll click the plus icon and choose select background, but that also selects the perch. So I'll choose subtract and then objects and then drag around this area in order to remove it. Then from the color swatch, I'll add a green color. I'll add one more mask, again objects, dragging over the feathers here, and then selecting a purplish color using the color swatch. However, I can see that it has colored this area between the feathers, so I'll choose subtract, select the brush, enable auto mask, get a little bit larger of a brush, and then click in order to remove that. Excellent, I'll click on the eye icon to toggle the before and after. I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.